Welcome back to Alan's Trains, Inkscape Basics 2. Let's see where we got to. I've made this screen to show all of the icons we've looked at and the ribbon at the top. In the future, I'll add any icons that we discuss into this drawing for you. So let's get started. Let's open our file that we closed the first time in Basics 1. Go to File at the top, go down to Open Recent, and at the top, it should say first drawing. Now I want to take the colours out of these. So click on the box. Go to the bottom left hand corner you'll see a big red cross and it will remove the colour. Go to the small circle and press the cross again and it will remove it. Now if we wanted to keep that blue one, this big circle as a different colour, just go down to the ribbon at the bottom after you've highlighted the box and press for example, red. You can have a red circle. We don't want any colours in, so we press that. And the only thing we're really going to work on today is this box. So to make it easier to work with, we're going to move that to a different part of the canvas. Highlight it, hold the left button down on the mouse and drag, and it will move it to a different part of the canvas. Once we've done that, we want to change the size of that box. Now, while it's highlighted, there's an easy way. We click on an indicator arrow at the top right, for example, and we drag and the box becomes bigger. Now, if we know what size box we want, instead of trying to manipulate it to the size, but we know the size, then go to this part here on the third ribbon, which says the width, W, and the height. Now, if you want to keep the same ratio, there's a lock button in the middle. Press that. It will highlight blue. And we'll change this to 180. And you will see that it's changed the height, same ratio. Now, if you don't want the same ratio and you just want to increase one of them to say 190, just press 190 it will change the width but not the height. Before you made that alteration make sure that you have clicked the unlock and you'll know because it's not blue anymore. Now we want to make another box and it's going to be the same size box. So click on there and when it's there with that little, uh, little indicator compass then just hold there, press right on your mouse and press duplicate. Hover again and it will duplicate the box. Now we've got two boxes and as the snapping tool is still on if we try to move these around you'll see that it lines them up. If the snapping tool was off then they would be able to be placed wherever you want but for this we're going to try and add windows now to an imaginary front of a house. Make sure you've pressed the select button and it's blue and you know it's on. Then go to the box or rectangle tool and just draw what you think is a typical window that you want. Now, if you can't see that clearly enough, press the select, go to object and go down to fill and stroke. This will open another panel. You'll have to move across there and look at the stroke sign and you can change it i've got this set at one mil but you could change that to any size you want if you can't see it clearly enough so just change yours to one millimeter if it isn't set on that we can then finish with the fill and stroke and close it now we're going to move that window into place and again because the snapping tool is on it will place it proportionally in the drawing if you want to make it smaller, as we said, just press on one of the indicators down and there's your window. Or you can do what we did before, go up to width and height and change it. Now you want four of those windows. You don't want to have to draw it again. So hover over it, click on it, hold the click on the right button, press duplicate, hold on it again and drag, and you've got the window. Now you want another two. You don't have to draw them again or do that. Now 
click with your left mouse button and surround them and they'll both highlight. Hover the mouse till it shows you the little compass indicator. Right click, duplicate, again click and drag and you've got the four and it will place them at the other side. Now if we wanted to duplicate those we could go around all of them again right click, duplicate and drag and we could have four windows wherever we want. I won't put them in here. So we now want to add a door. So click on one of these squares and duplicate the same way we've shown. Click and drag, a bit small for a door. So we can then click on the arrow up on here, drag it up, arrow wide, and again, you can alter it in these width and heights if you wish. This is just to get an idea of using the tools. Once you've done that, if you want to duplicate this, instead of having to go through all that again, we can do this. Surround it all, and you'll see that it highlights all of the windows and all of the doors. Now, so that it's easier to move, go to Object at the top, and about seventh down, press Group. Now it will lock them together. Now, while it's highlighted, right click with the mouse, duplicate, and it will drag, click and drag, and you've got a second building. That avoids having to do it all separately. So we'll just take this box away, and these spare windows, and we'll now move one of these up here. Now we want to add four windows on the bottom of this one, but not this one. I'll highlight it again. And this time, go to Object, Ungroup, and it will ungroup the drawing. Now, left mouse, click around, and it will highlight them. Again, as before, duplicate, pull them down, and four windows. And you've now got all of the windows added to the drawing. You can now then surround it, object and group again, duplicate and make as many copies as you want. So you could make as many houses as you want. Now we'll say that you want to print or cut these out. Well, before you can do that, Let's hold the control button down and using your mouse to shrink everything down, you must go back to the original page. Take off anything that's on the white page because that is the print area. So you now need to move these into the print area. Now, if we just move that one into the print area, that is all that will print. Or if you send it to a machine, that's all it will cut. So the limitation is the size that you can fit onto that page. Now, if you've got an A3 printer, well, obviously you can put more on. But there we are. We've got the two main ones that we want on there. We now say File, Save, and then that will allow you to print it. And to print, just go to File and Print, or use this print feature here, which will print the document. That's about as far as we want to go today and hope this has really got you moving along the path of finding the icons and making Inkscape work for you. I look forward to seeing you next time, but don't forget, you've got to go to File at the top and go to Close or better still, Save so that you save it first, then File, Close. I'll see you next time on basics three.